Yeah, so we've, we've known each other quite a long time, haven't we? We've known each other a very long time, since I first went along to the Norwich Centre in, I think it was 1982 or 1983. Yeah. Do you remember what brought you along to the centre then? Uh, I do. I remember who brought me along. It was my girlfriend, Claire. Mm. You probably remember, don't you? Oh, yeah. Mm. So um, she had seen some publicity for a Dharma course and wanted to go along, but didn't want to go along by mm. herself. Mm. I didn't really want to go, <laughs> but I accompanied her. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what brought you along? Because you were, you were the chair then, weren't you, when I... No, no, Abai was the chair. I was, Abai was still the chair. I was only just quite newly ordained, and, right. but I was working with him around the centre. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a longer story for me. I was, well, just before moving to Norwich in 79, I'd been living in Ireland for three years in a village community yeah, with that's people right. with learning difficulties. Uh, yeah, before that, I'd, I'd actually, well, I did about five, six years farming. And before that, I travelled over land and spent over a year in India. So coming back to the UK, sort of getting back down to earth, you know, romantic ideas of getting back to nature. And, uh, well, the romantic ideas got knocked out of me pretty quickly. <laughs> of, of, uh, mm -hmm. The world of farming. Yeah. But, yeah. We, I moved towards um, sort of a com more community life. So you know, by then, I, well, I, I was married. I'd, I'd married, uh, well, who became Padmavati, who uh, mm. we'd been at university together. Mm. We travelled to India together, worked on farms, were, were in Ireland, uh, in this village community with people with learning difficulties for three years. And uh, I was just coming to feel more and more that I really valued the work. It was pretty, uh, you know, it was a complete life. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just wasn't in harmony with the sort of spiritual background to it, which was a sort of esoteric Christian background. I, I told them when I went there, I, if I was anything, I was a Buddhist. Yeah, right. And I think yeah, yeah. after three years, I was pretty sure actually yeah. I was a Buddhist. Yeah. And uh, wrote around, you know, we decided we were going to leave. Uh, I wrote around to different Buddhist groups asking if it was going to be possible you know, to move with my young family, had two children by then, uh, to uh, yeah, just live near other Buddhists and get more involved. And uh, some friends of mine had been along to the opening of the LBC, so they suggested I wrote to the FWBO as well as to these other groups I'd heard right. of, which I did. And I heard back from the, the LBC, I got a couple of newsletters and uh, a couple of addresses of people I wrote to and never heard back from. That's another story. <laughs> uh, but in one of the newsletters, I read about this Sangharakshita character yeah. who uh, had long hair and I was a child of the 60s. My hair wasn't long anymore because it got too smelly and greasy <laughs> milking cows. But uh, uh, yeah, definitely sort of... That was one point of connection. Uh, he spent many years in India, and those, my year of 15 months in India definitely felt you know, like quite a mm. key point in my life. Mm. And he was English, and one of the things I'd found you know, in India, I'd spoken to various or met various gurus and yeah. teachers, and back in the UK I'd met some Tibetan teachers, but... I'd never felt I'd quite been able to communicate myself to them in a way they could tell me what I needed. And I thought maybe mm. this yeah. Englishman could. So one afternoon before going to milk the cows, I sat on the floor and wrote this rambling letter to him, mm. which I sent off. And I don't know, a little while later, I got a reply where he said... Uh, he wouldn't try and answer all my questions because he'd need to write two or three books to do that. <laughs> but he, uh, as I'd asked for advice, he'd give me some. And what he did, he simply stressed the importance of being around other people who shared your values yeah. and ideals yeah. and how easy it was for those ideals to come to nothing if you didn't have that sort mm. of 
mm. context, and especially people a bit further on the path than yourself. Mm. Mm. So what, what year was this? Uh, this was the end of 78. So early 79, I, I traveled over to England, visited the LBC, visited Norwich, and in the summer moved over with, uh, with wife mm. and young children. Because I, I remember going and babysitting for your children <laughs> and a couple of times, I think, yeah. with my girlfriend. You, and at that time, Pamavati and the children were living outside of Norwich, mm. but you were living in, in the uh, community just next to the centre. So yeah. How did that, all that come about? Yeah. Yeah, well, that was sort of uh, not what I expected or planned at all. Uh, when I moved, I very much had the idea of forming a family's community and Banty was very encouraging of that idea as well. He was quite keen actually to see family communities. And I, I had this idea of a sort of Buddhist street, you know, with people with families, uh, s men's communities, women's community, maybe older people, sort of sheltered housing, maybe sh a sheltered mm. housing for people with learning difficulties. Mm. And I still think it would be great if we could do something like that. I remember you wrote uh, an article about yeah. that, didn't you? I even went and spoke to some of the local councillors and, mm. but you know, just realised we just weren't ready for it, you know. That, uh, you know, our own sort of relationships weren't stable enough and we, a lot of us, we, with, with families, we were still working out who we were and where we wanted to go with life. Yeah. And yeah, with uh, Padmavati and myself, I mean, I'm telling my story, she might tell a very different story. Yeah. So remember that. Uh, you know, we'd been together since we were students. We'd done lots of things together, traveling, farming. We'd really been thrown back on each other a lot. And then arriving around the FWBO, it was as if, you know, we were meeting people like us and everything opened up. And yeah, we were just, you know, just sort of asking questions we'd never got around to asking, you know, were mm. we really suited to be each other? What did we really want? Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think we both remained all along very much committed to being there for our children. And at the same time, you know, I was enjoying hanging out with in the men's community and working in, in the restaurant. Mm. And she was getting involved with the, the women's uh, around Norwich and uh, yeah at one point I I suggested that I, I thought I'd really like to spend a few nights each week in the community and uh, <clears throat> the rest of the time with the family and she actually said she'd rather I left hmm. and uh, I think for her it was really an important thing was just feeling her her independence as a woman hmm. And I, well, I respected that, it, it, but it was, I, th I think it was difficult for us both. Uh, as I say, we both felt very much committed to being there for our children. And, mm. You know, we've all, always, you know, got along well enough. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I'd spend my free time and weekends and holidays with the kids and I'd look after them when she went off on retreat mm. and things. But yeah, it was, uh, I suppose, both very sort of, demanding, uncomfortable, and in another way liberating to start to sort of mm. look at how else we might live. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I became a father uh, much later on in life, in, uh, when I was 43, so mm. 2003. I think by then, <clears throat> I mean, I was, you know, it was a, I was very happy to become a father and decide, made the decision to, you know, uh, immediately that I wanted to live, you know, with, um, well, she wasn't my wife, but, you know, my partner and, and my daughter, and very happily so. Uh, also, I think, uh, would, you know, it was a different point in my life. I'd got involved uh, with the FWBO as it was then, when I was about 22 or 23, got a date mm -hmm. when I was 25, and um, I'd done a lot of what I really needed to do as a younger mm -hmm. man, and I think by the time it came to being a father, in a way, I was I was very happy to um, mm -hmm. uh, to do that, you know, and 
Yeah, I feel I've got a very supportive situation. You know, my wife, mm. she is now is very, very supportive of me. And, um, mm. and also I think the ethos in Tree Ratna had changed. Mm. Uh, certainly when I first came along, I can remember lots of conversations with you because we ended up moving into community and we shared a room together for quite a while, didn't we? And um, the ethos then was, was, was much more that sexual relationships, certainly sexual relationships should be on the, uh, I think the phrase was the periphery of one's mandala. And... Um, and families, uh, you know, my impression was a period when we're trying to get people more involved, trying to build up the community. And, mm. um, you know, family life does take up a lot of time, though mm. it's, you know, can be very fruitful in all sorts of ways. Mm. So I can remember, you know, kind of grappling with that. Mm. And, um, but by the time I became a father, I think that, eth that, that kind of, uh, mm. you know, uh, yeah, the ethos had changed quite a lot in the sense of um, I certainly felt it was a much it was how to put it a kind of more there was a more benign attitude towards mm. becoming a father or mm. a mother and mm. um, yeah I think it's an interesting area you know mm. because um, you know one's choices in that area certainly have a big effect you know, in your life, mm. I certainly, you know, believe that one can practice um, effectively in family life as long as, you know, there's supportive conditions there. But I think that, you know, the lifestyle we choose isn't unimportant, is it? Mm. Mm. And uh, I'd like to be p part of a community and appreciate being part of a community where there's been a critique of the couple and the family. Though mm. at times I think that's you know, mm. being harsh and unhelpful, but I think it is helpful having that critique. And I've certainly, mm. though I could complain about things that have happened, I think I overall appreciate having, mm. you know, being part of a community that does have a critique on that. Mm. Mm. Um, as I say, I became a you know, father much later on in life and, and when in a different, a different period of Tree Ratna. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do you have a sense where that sort of uh, critique came from? Well, for me, it came from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, well, in that we, you know, you became quite, you know, you were, during mm. that period, you were very definitely a Kalyanamitra for me. Mm. Mm. So, as I say, a lot of conversations and the and the ideas that I'm grappling mm. with, you, mm. you kind of mm. were the one that was um, helping me to grapple with them. I, I my sense is it came from. Uh, yeah, from from ideas that had come from Bante, from Sangharakshita, mm. and and but also from others, and um, also I think it was probably when you know the period I was in, I was um, it was an area that the order members of your generation, or not not a long much before me, but mm. you know, and others had grappled with and was very mm. alive in their life. Mm. I mean, I don't know where you experienced. Uh, Mm. or how you experience that critique on family mm. and the couple and stuff. I, you know, one thing I realised at a certain point was I just never, it had actually never occurred to me not to have a family. No. You know, I grew up in a, you know, big, well, family. I had a brother and two sisters and a big extended family and, you know, a small village, lots of friends. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I didn't want to be a monk. I wanted to be, you know, have a mm. girlfriend, a partner, and it just seemed like part of the deal. You had a family. Mm. Uh, I guess that's probably true of a lot of people coming from a more traditional background, but mm. it, it was actually a bit of a shock when I realised it. I just never actually occurred to me, mm. you know, as a real possibility. And so I guess part of uh, what was going on was people were just being encouraged to question yeah. what do you really want to do with your life you know yeah. uh, rather than just drifting in yeah. which I think it was very easy for people of my generation to do right uh, you know actually well what do I really want to do with my life and how do I uh, yeah how do I want to live and I must say I do feel a lot of gratitude for those who chose 
to c dedicate their lives to the Dharma and mm. to, to working to build the movement. Because mm. I think it's because there are people who've done that and continue mm. to do that. You mm. know, we have all the facilities that make mm. it possible for, mm. you know, those who have families and careers and partners and so on to still have an effective life in the Dharma. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I think, it, it, you know, it, it's, it, sometimes it's an uncomfortable dis discussion because you want people to really think, really work through what they want to do with their lives. And at the same time, you know, if people want to have, fa uh, really do want to have a family, really do want to, uh, you know, have a, that mm. life, well, to give them all the support, mm. encouragement you can to still have an effective Dharma life. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I think to just to really think these things through, it is very important. And mm. just suggesting to people they think about it can sometimes be seen as trying to, mm. you know, being anti-family or anti-couple. But mm. I, I, th I just see it as, you know, just we do need to have a culture where we yeah. We really think and we really question our yeah. actions and motives and, yeah. you know, because, you know, I love my children and I want to do the best for them. And, you know, all too often people seem to drift into marriage, drift into yeah. family life and, yeah. Yeah. you know, it doesn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I think it, it is so important when really takes mm. on board those responsibilities and, and then really uh, fulfills them as well as one possibly yeah. can. You know, I'm, it's like with, you know, being a parent, it's not an easy business. You know, we all probably start off thinking, oh, I'm going to do a better job than my parents did. But then you know, the reality of living a life, trying to do what you feel you need to do and do the best you can for your children, yeah. it's, uh, it's not that easy. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, I think, yeah. you know, one does one's best. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's important, isn't it, the point, you know, now that we, uh, because I think there is something important in having a, you know, a critique and getting mm. people to, to question their choices and stuff. Mm. It's important, isn't it, that we maybe, um, you know, acknowledge anything that was unhelpful yeah. in the mix in the past or, you yeah. know, even in, yeah. in the present, the, yeah. the, you know, and, and we're just clear about that. Absolutely, because, yeah, people can be very black and white and one-sided. Mm. Yeah, no, when I came along, I did feel initially, you know, I wasn't taken as seriously as I wanted to be because, you know, I was a mm. weak man in a dependent relationship sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I was stubborn. And, you know, there's also the other side of it, you know. You know, some people have told me when I first came along, I was a bit of a pain, you know. I'd been to India, I'd read all these books, you know, I'd done all this stuff and I was just expecting people to recognise my spiritual qualities and throw a case around my neck and they were just saying, uh, -uh you know, yeah. just relax, just calm down. Yeah. You know, so there's, you know, we bring our own stuff and we work it out in, in the context of the Sangha and a Dharma life and, mm. yeah, you know, re relationships don't always work out. Mm. And, uh, you know, we're not always the parents we'd have liked to have been, but yeah, I guess we just do our best. And having the Sangha around and the ethical guidelines and uh, mm. background, I think, well, I think it certainly helped me work through all that mm. tricky stuff that if I hadn't been in the Sangha, I'd have probably had to work it out. But mm. perhaps, you know, more untidily and messily. Mm. Okay. So, uh, have you got anything you'd say to people thinking about having a family these days, Mokshananda? Um, well, I do, people do ask me, you yeah. know, about yeah. having a family, and what I say is that, um, you know, it's, it's their choice, and that, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, we are an order that is not, you know, monastic, lay or anything like that we recognize that you know anybody and with any lifestyle can go for refuge and stuff but uh, that it i always encourage people to um really think you know think it through as fully as possible and to think about the conditions under which they're going to have a family 
not just, mm. you know, but actually how to create the most supportive conditions possible if it's really, really is something that they want to do. Mm. Um, you know, I still strongly support community life and I want to belong to an order that has a real range of lifestyles and mm. have people living a, a monastic life and people in family and people in between and, you know, so... Um, yeah, that, that's you know that's what I say really, just to really help people to think it through. But I think there is something about becoming a father or a mother that is, you know, you can't really know what it's like until mm. you actually do it. Mm. So I think that's why you know it's so important to have, you know, c supportive conditions in place. And I think one of the things I feel fortunate about, you know, I live in Spain and my wife's family is, is very large family and very supportive and. You know, it's very relatively easy to, um, uh, you know, to find support in being a father. I think it can be quite different if you're more isolated and mm. um, don't have much family or friends around that can help. And then there's economic questions and mm. your, the point you're in at life, and it's quite complicated. But, yeah. Okay, good. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you.